I bet that you are desperate to start sowing some seeds. I know I certainly am. But what if I told you that there was something so much more useful that you could be doing right now that is going to save you money, time, and waste for the whole gardening year? Well, it's a seed germination test, or you may have also heard it called a seed viability test. I'm going to show you exactly how and why you should be doing this test with my four T's that you need to know. Tools, time, technique, and tips. When I first heard of a seed germination test a few years back, I do not mind admitting that I thought, why? Why bother? This is such a daft idea. Surely when you sow your seeds, you find out whether they're gonna work. And if they work, they work. And if they don't, they don't. But actually, you want to know that when you sow your seeds, well, they're going to be viable. Otherwise, a second or even third sowing attempt may not actually leave you with enough growing time to get a harvest or to get the flowers you want. It's also a great thing to do with your own home collected seed, where there does tend to be much more variance in success rates compared to seed that you've purchased. So have I convinced you yet? Yes? Okay, great. Let's get stuck in. One of the great things about a seed viability test is how quick it is. A little bit like baking, there are two time periods, getting set up and then waiting for the results. When it comes to a seed germination test, in less than 10 minutes, you can have your seeds in place and the test is ready to go. After that, all you have to do is wait. And that time is gonna be based on the seeds that you're checking and how long those specific seeds need to germinate. So that can be anything from a couple of days, in the case of zinnias, all the way up to a few weeks for something like GMs. Let's talk tools. And a seed germination test requires little to no equipment, and certainly nothing specialist or expensive. You are going to need, for starters, seeds. Let's face it, it'd be tricky to do this without them. And then some paper towels, serviettes, or some tissue paper. Alternatively, what you can use is a small amount of compost, but I personally find that using a paper towel is actually just so much cleaner and more convenient. And then a watertight container, or alternatively, a plastic bag. And then finally, a small amount of water. Now, a quick word on containers versus bags. In my experience, both work equally well, but in a world where we really do need to be reducing our plastic usage, for me, it just doesn't really sit right to be using plastic bags for something like this. Instead, what I would recommend is choosing a reusable container, whether it's plastic or glass. Plus, doing this has another really super useful advantage, which I'm gonna show you later. Now, technique time, and this could not be simpler. What we're gonna do is effectively sow the seeds that we have into some kind of damp medium and monitor them to see whether they germinate. So the first thing that you want to do is take your container or bag of choice and then get your paper towel and fold it very roughly into the shape that's going to fit that container. Whoa if you don't drop it. Now, remember that I promised you another great reason to choose a container rather than using plastic bags? Well, this is it. And because you don't need to worry about how the plants are going to grow, it means that you can really easily stack multiple layers of damp tissue paper or paper tiles into one single container. 
It just saves you having loads of floppy plastic bags that are filled with wet tissue to manage, and I find a container is just so much better. So step two then is to wet your paper towel. You don't want it to be absolutely dripping wet, just really well dampened, a bit like compost if you're sowing seeds. I always do this bit first because it means that the seeds are going to stick slightly to the paper. Otherwise, can you imagine trying to handle folded dry paper towels with seeds rolling and pinging all over the place? It is not going to go well. So now you've got your damp paper towel, place your seeds on the surface of that paper towel, except rather than sowing loads of them, all you need to do is use a few, really just enough to know that the result is going to be a sound one, but at the same time, not so many that you're wasting seeds. You can see here that I've maybe used a dozen little Tajiti seeds, pretty much about the same number of zinnia seeds, or perhaps if I was sowing something larger, like my own nasturtium seeds here, I'd maybe only use about six or seven. And you can see why I've folded the paper towel now. When you fold it over, it helps keep the seeds in place, just like a little envelope, and keeps them moist on both sides. Doing this means that then you can really easily add multiple layers into the one single container, but in a way that equally when you want to check them, you can lift them out really easily to check them. Next up, add each paper towel full of your seeds into your container or bag. In this container, I think I could easily stack, well, six or seven sets of test seeds if I wanted. Close up the container with the lid or seal the bag. What this is going to do is it's going to help maintain a nice humid environment. And then step five, place this container in a warm, well-lit area, such as a windowsill or under grow lights if you have them, or if it's appropriate to the seed type, you can put them somewhere warm and dark, uh, like an airing cupboard, for example. That's what I did with these, and wait until you see them. Then the final step is to check on your seeds daily. You're looking for two things. Obviously, the first is germination. That's what you're really wanting to see. But the second one, and it's more applicable to seeds that are going to take that little bit longer, is to check that the paper towel stays moist. After about a week or so, or in the case of zinnias, maybe only 24 to 48 hours, because they just seem to be filled with rocket fuel every time I sow them, you should start to see signs of germination. Things like shoots, roots emerging from the seeds. If you don't see any signs of germination, give it another little bit of time, just in case they're slow. But really, after a few weeks past when they should be germinating, if they haven't, they're probably no longer viable. Let's have a look at how mine got on. So in this container, I've planted, or well, sown, three different types of seeds. And I can already see from the container that it is looking hopeful. If I lift up the first layer and have a look, these are my Tajiti seeds. And you can see there that some of them have shoots. Let's have a look at my nasturtiums. And I can tell already these have done really well. Check out the shoots that are coming from these. Look at that. 100% germination rate, and I am delighted. So these are gonna be great. And then finally, at the bottom layer, it's my zinnias. And again, we've got roots, we've got shoots, and it is looking super hopeful. So three sets of seeds checked without having to use any compost, with only having to use one container, no mess, no fuss. And I know that if I now store these appropriately, until it comes time to sow them, they are going to perform for me. So I promised you propagation using four T's, and we're on to the last T, which is tips. First up, like any test, you need to make sure that you control the conditions. Make the conditions as close to what the seeds you're testing need as possible. So ask yourself, and more importantly, ask the back of the seed packet or the internet, do these seeds, for instance, need warmth to germinate? If so, what temperature? Or do they need light? or instead, do they want to germinate in the dark? Giving them the correct conditions is going to give them the best chance of actually working for you. Second tip, don't waste your seeds. If you're doing this test like me in the midwinter, 
it is unlikely that they're going to flourish as seedlings, but if you fancy a challenge, you can still very gently add these seedlings into a pot of compost and have a stab at growing on. For many edibles, you can actually keep them going a little bit longer and be all swanky and eat them as microgreens. For these, you wouldn't be doing that. And then my very final tip, once you've done the test, if the seeds germinate the way you hope, make sure that you store them appropriately if you haven't already. Speaking from bitter, bitter experience, it's always a good idea to properly label your seeds, keep track of their age and also their storage conditions. Then they're going to have the best chance of performing just the way you want them to and the way you've tested them to. That's it. With just a little bit of time and patience, now you can really easily test the viability of your seeds. That way you can get a good idea of what to expect when you sow them later in the year. But most importantly, it helps you avoid disappointment. Now, this is just the first step in your own seed sowing journey, so make sure to head across and watch this video next. It's got more must-watch information and loads of great tips to help you grow confidently and enjoy success in your own garden. And until next time, see you later.